we're going to write a chained hash, and our chained hash is going to be an array, and every position in the array is going to have a linked list, and our objects that we're going to put in there are going to be what we're going to call hash elements, and a hash element is going to have a key and a value. So our users are going to give us a key and a value. We're going to store them, and we're going to use a special inner class just to store the key and the value. We're going to use the key as the basis to put things into our hash. We're going to choose which bucket in the array the element goes into based on the hash code returned by the key. And then our users will be able to retrieve the value for a key. They'll be able to modify a key, so given a key, give it a new value. They'll be able to go through all of the keys and get values associated with them. Okay. This is exactly like a dictionary in Python or a hash in Perl any of those kind of um, data structures where you take a key and a value and you store them together. In Java, we're going to use generics. We don't know what our key and value are going to be. When you wrote your linked list, you saw an example where you just had one kind of generic. Right? We had an E. You could use T for type. You can use S for something, O for object. It doesn't matter. In our particular class for our hash, we're going to have two generics. One generic we're going to call K for key, and the other generic we're going to call V for value. If you really wanted to, you could have multiple other generics. And those same rules apply. Every time you, you mean key, you're going to use K. Every time you mean value, you're going to use V, just like you did before with your E's. You could have a T, an S, a U, a V, a W, an X, a Y, a Z, whatever you wanted along here. And then in your code, any time you're referring to that object, you put that appropriate letter. But putting it in the class definition like this tells Java that we're going to be using generics in our code. And our hash class is going to implement our hash interface of keys and values. Okay. And our hash interface is going to define a bunch of methods that we have to write, of course. So first of all, let's take care of this hash element in a class that we want to have. This is a private class that only we're allowed access to, so we're going to have an inner class. And our data structure is going to be the only thing that can use it. So our class hash element is going to accept generic keys and values. And we're going to use this in our linked list. And so what do we have to ensure in our linked list? If we're going to use something in our linked list, we have to ensure that it implements which interface? How do we know if two hash elements are the same? Comparable. So our class hash element KV is going to implement the comparable, but it's not going to compare two strings. It's not going to compare two people. It's going to compare two hash element kv. Okay? So it's saying, I will compare two hash element kvs. Now when we go to add it to our linked list, we can use the compare to method that we're going to write later to check if two things are the same. 
So our hash element is just going to have two variables, a key and a value that we need to remember. And our constructor Our constructor is just going to accept the key and the value that are provided to us, and we're just going to store them. So this dot key is equal to key, and this dot value is equal to value. Okay, so that stores our key and our value in these variables that belong to this inner class. Since we've said that we're going to implement this interface, now we have to write a public int compare to method. And we're going to compare ourselves to this to another kind of hash element kv. And I'll just call that o for other. So we're the author of this data structure. You're the author of this data structure. And you can decide what it means for two hash elements to be the same. It could be that their keys are the same. It could be that their values are the same. It could be that their keys and their values are the same. It's up to you to decide what that is. In this example, we're just going to say if their keys are the same, they're the same. If the keys are different, they're not. And so we're just going to return, and we're going to cast a comparable k, this dot key dot compare to o dot key, and that's all we're going to return. That's all we have to return. By adding this cast here, it ensures that if anybody wants to add a key to our hash, their key has to have a compare to method. For this inner class, we have our constructor and we have a compare to method. What we have not done is override equals. So if we ask whether two hash elements are the same, then it's just going to use the object equals method. And that is just based off of the memory location. What we have not done is override the toString method. So if we try and print a hash element, then we'll get the memory location, because it's the object's toString. What we have not done is override the object's hash code method. And so if we call hash code on a hash element, we'll get some bizarre number based on its memory location from the object. But that's OK, because the only place that this hash element is being used is in our data structure, in this data structure. It's an inner class. It's private. It cannot be used anywhere else. And since it can't be used anywhere else, we can assert that it doesn't need equals to string hash code. If somewhere in our hash we use equals for hash elements, we need to come back and add an equals method. But we're not going to. We don't need to. We've got a comparable. That's all we're going to use. So this little inner class takes care of our data. This is our data. This is what we're going to add to our linked lists. Does that make sense? We need to have a couple of globally scoped variables for our, for our hash. And I usually put the globally scoped variables underneath my inner classes. 
we're going to have a couple of ints that we'll use. We're going to have a num elements, or a mum elements, no, a num elements int, which is just basically our current size, right? So when we add something to our hash, we're going to increment num elements. When we remove something, we'll decrement that. We're going to have a table size. And our table size is just the size of the array. And we just want to know what that is, because every time we add something or find something or remove something, we have to mod its hash code value. After we make it positive, we have to mod it on the table size. So we want to have a globally scoped variable for that. We're going to have um, a double, which we'll call max load factor. And that maximum load factor is the point at which we decide once our current load factor exceeds maximum load factor, OK, we've got to resize. And we can either allow users to define that, or we can just set that maybe in our constructor that we'll see next. And then finally, we've got to have our table, our array. And so that's going to be an array of linked lists. And each linked list is going to have a hash element, kv, one of these. So our array of linked lists is going to be, let me do it in a different color to emphasize it, is going to be linked list hash element of kv. And it's an array of those. And I'm just going to call it h array for hash array. It doesn't matter what, you, what variable you call it. It's probably not a good name, but it works. So as we've seen before in our classes, we're defining what our variables are going to be called when they're globally scoped, but we don't initiate them until we call our constructor. right? And so we have this linked list, which is a linked list of hash element kv. So your previous linked lists would have been integer or string. So hash element kv is the name of our class. That's what goes in these angle brackets. So now we have generics of hash element kvs, and that has generics inside of it. And you could have generics inside of that too. And so you can have multiple layers where you've got generics hidden in generics in generics, okay? 